Last week we started to look at a um, new Lamrim text called The um, Essence of, of Refined Gold. We spoke about that on the basis of this particular rebirth that we have attained, of a, not just as a human rebirth, but a precious human rebirth, we have this basis that we can use to, uh, to achieve our, our innermost wish, and that is to achieve a state of lasting happiness, a state completely separated from suffering. And the way to do this is through the various practices that are described in detail in our text here, in this Lamarum text. And we also spoke last week about how the starting point is uh, before any activity, in particular now when we're looking at a new text, is to establish a motivation. So in general, when establishing a motivation, we start out by reminding ourselves of this, uh, this preciousness, of this rebirth that we have. In other words, the preciousness of the opportunity that we have attained in this life. And that if we don't use it to progress well towards the eventual attainment of liberation from suffering or even enlightenment itself, that would be inappropriate. That would be a, a great loss. So that is the first point in the generation of a motiv motivation, to remind ourselves of our, our situation. Then the second is having generated this w wish to, to utilize our opportunity well, we turn our attention to others reminding ourselves that they are exactly the same as us in wanting to be free of pain and, and difficulties, the same as us in wanting to only experience states of, of lasting happiness. Moreover, I am only one person, when we, whereas when we think of others, others are innumerable across the realms of all the human beings and animals and unseen beings. The others are innumerable, and therefore, it's inappropriate to only strive for my own welfare, but I need to also ensure that I uh, liberate every sentient being from suffering. When thinking about this, the suffering of others and their desired wish for happiness, we use this as a basis then to generate the minds of love and the minds of compassion to the point where th the, the love and compassion arises uh, in us in a sense that is so powerful and dominates us so that we see it as our individual responsibility to free others from suffering and to lead them to a state of lasting happiness. So in this way we generate the minds of love and compassion and special intention, taking responsibility for the welfare of others and then committing to becoming the most skilled of guides, a Buddha. So at that, this point we generate the mind of bodhicitta, committing to strive for enlightenment for the sake of others. And then the third point is, how do, does one fulfill this wish to attain enlightenment? So we've generated a sincere wish to attain enlightenment for the sake of others. So what does one do to, to um, achieve that? One practices the various um, um, uh, methods or techniques laid out here in the Lam Rim. So those are the three divisions or the three parts of a motivation that we should regularly establish. <coughs> Jangan jual lamrim cembur saya di, nasi aje 
ce pe masiș, ce ce mușu, sunt eu de ce să zan tu, ce tunda ningbo tu dubaina, te jangiu le mrim ce bosea de res. Ce zan? Ne ma sangie ce zan, le mrim din nemlen ce ce, le mrim din bati, nemlen ce ce sangie vares. An da da, ma omba sangie ce ce, le mrim bati nemlen ce ce sangie va mato, ti le mrim bati nemlen ce ce sangie va mares. Ce zan? An da da, nemlen ce ce ba sangie ce ce ce, de ce ce ce, care ne-am necigor, dar ne-am necigor la mine, ne? Ce-am lăm de rimbati, ne-am necigor. Ce-am necigor, ce-am lăm de rimbati, dar s-a gheat amge, ne? S-a gheat să ia, să le ia, covantul e, s-a gheat covantul e, ne-am necigor, dar ce-am lăm de rimbati. Ce-am gheat amge, ne? S-a gheat la mga, ne? L-am necigor, e sigur, da? In the many years that... Buddha Shakyamuni uh, blessed the world through uh, presenting his teachings. He gave a vast array of teachings, really a huge number of, of teachings that he gave. These, though, this vast array of, of teachings that the Buddha gave, these have been eloquently condensed into the Lamrim tradition. And so th- what is found then in the Lamrim t- tradition is a condensed summary of the entire Buddha Dharma, the entire teachings that the Buddha gave. And these teachings then were the, um, the road map or the path that the Buddha himself practiced in order to attain enlightenment, in order to actually become a Buddha. And these were the practices cultivated not only by himself, but all beings who have become enlightened. And not only that, but all those who are currently um, uh, 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 progressing towards the attainment of enlightenment are practicing these self-same practices that are condensed in the Lamrim tradition. So this Tibetan word Lamrim is um, stages of the path, or to give it its fuller, fuller name, stages of the path to enlightenment. So this is the method. This for, uh, these are the stages of the mental paths to be developed to attain the goal of enlightenment. All past Buddhas have practice in this way. All those who have already developed and are further developing these mental paths are practicing these same stages to attain their goal enlightenment. And therefore, as practitioners who also have a wish for enlightenment, we too need to develop these same mental paths. So other than this path or this roadmap that's laid out in the, the Lamrim tradition, there is no other technique that can take one all the way to enlightenment. ตอนนี้ที่นี่ก็จะอยู่ลำลึกเช่นบอกว่าเสียดีลำลึกลำยืนเบียดลำชาดีตอนนี้ก็เป็นมาสัจจะชิบุสังสังเกตุความทบทว
So us as practitioners who have the wish to also be counted amongst the children of, of the Buddhas, in other words, become bodhisattvas and eventually Buddhas too, we need to practice the stages of the path to enlightenment just like all those others have done too. So we've heard this said in, in the, this series of teachings, we've heard it in previous teachings, and the statement though that is often made needs to come from or be based on sound reasons. Because for, for, this, uh, for this, um, the emphasis on the, the Lamrim teachings to be valid, it has to be based on sound reasons. Because all religious traditions present techniques to, for the development of, of happiness and the elimination of suffering. All religions do this, and non-religious philosophies present techniques to develop oneself spiritually, to develop and strengthen one's happiness and eliminate problems. So what then is, uh, are the, the, the particular uh, great qualities of the, of the um, Lamarum tradition in terms of the source that it comes from? So the so what is the source for the statement um, that the Lamarum tradition presents the entire path to enlightenment, the stage of unsurpassed happiness, of perfected happiness, a state where no faults remain? So that is, is a question that should arise in one's mind. Mm. <laughs> And Um, on the first, first page of the text, the uh, fourth paragraph down, Lamrim is an especially profound aspect of Dharma, for it is a tradition of practice sound in origin. The sound in origin is what is being um, as, uh, explicitly explained here. So in this verse, in the following verse, this is what is, is being, being looked at, establishing the reasons why the, um, the, the Lamrim the Lamrim tradition comes from a sound origin and is a, a valid, uh, there is a valid reason to rely on the set of teachings that are presented here. And so we've heard about the three goals that the Buddha Dharma leads one to, uh, encourages one to strive for. In other words, the goals um, that, if that one re is required to have in order for a practice to be one of the Buddha Dharma that is to attain a good rebirth of a human or a god, or to attain liberation from suffering, or the, the attainment of enlightenment. So Lamrim is a, 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 the basis of practice for the attainment of these three goals. Mm. <laughs> Chasawa, <laughs> 
In reading further, it has neither fault nor shortcoming, for it is a complete practice perfectly uniting both method and wisdom aspects of the path. So this is, a, this is an important point, because if, if a, a particular presentation um, designed a particular presentation which is given, motivated to eliminate suffering and achieve happiness, if it is incomplete, then one's um, development, one's spiritual development, is of course going to be limited. One will not be able to elimin eliminate suffering. One will not be able to there therefore achieve uninterrupted, lasting happiness. So this could be likened if, if someone um, um, uh, uh, doesn't have their complete uh, uh, physical limbs, then this will serve as an impediment to, uh, to, to them in their lives. So similarly, a spiritual path needs to be complete, otherwise one cannot achieve w one's final destination. And similarly, if the uh, presentation contains errors, or the, the presentation isn't in the correct sequence of practice, then even if the practitioner diligently applies what they are being trained in, they will be making mistakes. They will be, and moreover, they may be practicing in a mistaken sequence, an incorrect sequence, and these, these two elements will also prevent one from fully spiritually developing. So therefore, the, the um, path of, of spiritual progression, the Lam Rim, it needs to be both complete and unmistaken. And that's what this presentation is. ดิกุมเซียนอาตาบาชะโยมาลัมดังวังอาตุกิติญัมเนเจเปยะโกยอะเรชิมาเชโรวาตะยะโกยอะเรชิเนนะมิจิกิโตยะโกยอะนะอัน
Nemzipi,nemzipi,nemzipi,nemzipi,nemzipi,nemzipi,nemzipi,nemzipi,nemzipi,nemzipi,nemzipi,nemzipi,nemzipi,nemzipi,nemzipi,nemzipi,nemz
It provides all levels and grades of the techniques past the Nagarjuna and the Sangha, from the practices meant for beginners up to and including the final practice before full Buddhahood, the stage of non-practice. So the, the source or the, 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 the sound origin of the Lamarum teachings is Buddha Shakyamuni himself. And why is Buddha Shakyamuni presented as a, as, a, as a valid basis for these teachings? Because he it taught from his knowledge and experience. He wasn't teaching based just on what he had studied or he had heard from people that he considered to be reliable, but he also taught from his own experience. For many years he went through great difficulties, eliminating uh, sequentially all the, the faults in his mind, developing all his mental good qualities, to the point where all inner faults were completely eliminated, without leaving not a trace. And all inner good qualities were de developed to the point of perfection. And that's where enlightenment is attained. So based on this experience of achieving this perfected state, he presented the Buddha Dharma, and therefore the, this is, is seen as a, a valid or a genuine mm -hmm. and authentic source. And yeah, the news that the news we had, and that's why the news we had, the Quran, the Amnesty, the Amnesty, what the news we had, the Yahushu Rest, did it? Then the Yahushu Rest. In the Sangha, you mean the news we had? Long Yahushu Rest, right? Long time ago, you don't have Rest, right? And that is why the Amnesty had. You may then hear this and think, well, that's all uh, good, good and true. I'm sure the, the Buddha achieved something amazing and fantastic. But this was 2,600 years ago. And that's, you know, that's a sizable sp a sp a span of time. Is what he taught then from his experience in, in the um, ancient forests of India, is that still applicable to, to me in this modern time? So such a doubt may well arise. Mm. Mm. ตัวเจนมาคือเจนั้นเนี่ยงานจุกิตะกิโลบะลามัยนะตะเจรมุชิบาดูอันเจรมุชิบาดูสงตะเจซาเจรมุชิกิตะงุยโลมาเตซิก
and achieve similar results and taught these to the next generation. And this permeated all the, Tibetan, all the various Tibetan traditions. And if we think of the particular case here of the Kaluk school, then this lineage has continued from um, uh, un 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 unbroken from Lama Tisha to uh, uh, Lama Tsongkhapa and then through to a long succession of accomplished masters down to our own teachers in the present day. So due to this, uh, this unbroken lineage, we now can be confident that we're still receiving the authentic teachings of the Buddha. Mm. Dinigi, <laughs> Looking at the first sentence in the fifth paragraph, this graduated Dharma of taintless origin is like the wish fulfilling gem, for through it infinite beings can easily and quickly accomplish their purposes. So this then, uh, this line uh, uh, presents the extraordinary qualities of this uh, taintless origin, which is the Dharma. So this is what we've been speaking about thus far. So in the pre preceding paragraph, we looked at the sound in origin. Here it's translated as taintless origin. And that then is the, the, the Buddha Dharma, the, the teachings based on the um, knowledge and experience of, of the Buddha. And here it's, it's likened to a wish-fulfilling gem or a uh, yeah, wish-fulfilling jewel that is able to fulfill all the hopes and desires of whoever holds it. So the wish-fulfilling jewel here is this very text, this or the very Lamrim tradition. And it can fulfill all the purposes or all the wishes and, and dreams of um, sentient beings. And in our context here, what is the, 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 um, the desire or the wishes or the dreams of sentient beings? This refers to our innermost wish to experience only happiness and not to have this happiness ever interrupted by a moment of, of difficulty or problems at all. So the practicing the Lamrim, developing these realizations in our mind, this will lead to attaining a state of lasting happiness and elimination of all suffering. In other words, the fulfillment of our innermost wishes. And where it says here, can easily and quickly be accomplished. This makes reference to the, the pace of our progression. This is in our hands. The more effort and the, 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 more, the more joyous perseverance that we apply, the quicker our progress. And in this way, we'll easily be able to achieve our long for, uh, a long-held wish of experiencing lasting happiness. Uh, 
ကျေးဇန်းဒေတွေမာလူပါစီဒေဗေတွေကြီးမာတော်မာတော်မင်းနာမာလူပါလာရောင်မာတယ်ကျေးဇန်းမာလူပါလေတွေဒေဗေတွ
Tungasi And we also have here the uh, term wish-fulfilling gem. So the particular term that's used here is a less common word uh, for wish-fulfilling gem. Literally, it means, uh, this particular word literally means the most uh, precious of powerful kings. So what is being referred to here as the most precious of powerful kings? That is the, um, the practices that are found within the stages of the path to enlightenment, in other words, within the Lamarum tradition. And the reason they are referred to here as the most precious of powerful kings is there are uh, many, many different uh, religious or philosophical traditions present techniques to develop happiness and to eliminate suffering. But amongst these different techniques, what is found in the Lamarum, this is the most precious in that it can lead to the state of enlightenment can also lead to the state of liberation and it can lead to, to the temporary happiness of good rebirths. But these, being able to lead to these three goals of good rebirth, of liberation or enlightenment, this, makes the, uh, this uh, illustrates the extraordinary quality of the Lamarum tradition. And therefore, it is likened to the uh, wish fulfilling jewel or more literally, the most precious of powerful kings. Is that that? At this point, maybe further doubts are, are, are arising. So you may think that, yeah, well, you're a Buddhist, of course you're going to think that Buddhism is best. And you're going to say, yeah, others are fine too, but we really are number one. So that you may well think that, have such a valid doubt. Rang Same Dia the reason for saying that uh, the, the Buddha Dharma is, um, is, is the very, very best because it leads to these goals is, is um, not something, is not a statement that's made from a mind of, of bias or a mind of partiality. Rather, it's based on, on sound reasoning. Uh, 
So it's not a mind that's looking, um, it's not an opinion that is based on looking down at other religions course, or other um, uh, philosophical traditions, in that other religions and philosophical traditions have many good qualities to them. But moreover, the specific reasons why um, uh, Bud uh, uh, it, uh, Buddhism is presented, in particular the Buddhism that is presented in detail in the Lamrim tradition, is pre presented as being um, uh, unique in that it leads to liberation and enlightenment, is, can be divided, uh, can be presented in, with, with two branches. So the first one would be to do with, um, we, can call, we can call method or technique. So this comes down to the recognition that our, uh, us, as, uh, us each as individuals share the same innermost wish, and that is to experience only happiness. None of us take delight in problems and difficulties. We all want to be freed of these. And as we come to see the subtler levels that pro pro we experience problems on, we want to be freed of those as well. So we all want to experience only happiness. And this is a view that I as an individual don't uniquely hold, or us as a group don't uniquely hold, or us as Buddhists in general don't uniquely hold. Each and every human being holds, holds a sincere wish. Each and every animal, each and every living being holds the wish to only be, experience happiness and not a moment of suffering. With this recognition, one can develop this further through reflecting that this is a sh wish shared by all. If I compare myself to others, I am only one. But all others are so <laughs> incomparable in multitude. If I were to attain happiness for myself, but others were to be left suffering, how could I say that's suitable? How could I even say that was happiness when others were still suffering? So therefore, the liberation from suffering of all beings is my personal responsibility. And to fulfill that responsibility, to, to develop it to a point where this mere wish can actually have an impact on the happiness and suffering of others, I need to become a Buddha. I need to strive for enlightenment so that I can become a Buddha for the sake of others. And this stream of thinking here is what one uh, in, engages in to develop the mind of bodhicitta, or the mind of enlightenment, the mind committing to strive for enlightenment. And this is something unique to the Buddha Dharma. So that can be called method. And the second branch is that of view. And the view is also something unique within the Buddha Dharma. And that is where one looks at what is the root, what is the cause of suffering? One sees that all suffering, or all problems, or difficulties come from karma that we ourselves have accumulated through afflicted minds. And at the very root of these afflicted minds is the ignorance of self grasping. Having that knowledge, we then know that it's through abandoning this ignorance of self grasping that we can become freed of suffering. How to do so? We need to develop the antidotal mind, the contrary mind, the wisdom realizing emptiness, or the wisdom realizing selflessness. And then, so this knowledge, this understanding, as well as the technique in how to develop the wisdom realizing emptiness, this is uniquely found in the Buddha Dharma. So for these two reasons, that of bodhicitta, or in English, the mind of enlightenment, and secondly, that of view, how to develop the wisdom realizing emptiness, or the wisdom understanding um, um, reality, these are unique to the Buddha, Buddha Dharma. So it's for this reason that the Buddha Dharma is uh, solely able to lead to a state liberated from, from, from cyclic existence or samsara, lead to the state of enlightenment. And it's for this reason that the Buddha Dharma is presented as supreme. <laughs> Toujours 
and just to look back at the previous verse where it was referred to Nagarjuna and Asanka. So these were two great masters from, from ancient India. But one may wonder, so why are they specifically being pointed to here? There are many other great masters uh, even before them, such as many uh, foe destroyers. Why are these two specifically being indicated? Gumbulu <laughs> 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 Mm. Mm. Maybe to, to flesh out the doubt that you possibly are having, is that you think to yourself, hang on, as I've read, Nagarjuna came about, uh, uh, arose in the world 400 years after the Buddha. So certainly there would have been many other great um, uh, realized beings between uh, when the Buddha lived in the world and Nagarjuna came to the world. There's a 400 year ex expanse of time. So there would have been many other beings um, uh, studying and realizing and teaching uh, the Buddha Dharma. And then from the, in the expanse of time from when the Buddha was in the world to when uh, Asanga came into the world, that was about 900 years. So other than Nagarjuna in that intervening period, for sure there would have been many other great beings. So why are these two being uh, uh, so um, um, uh, uh, singled out? Uh, when, when the Buddha taught, he, he presented both the Tevadan Dharma and the, the Mahayana Dharma. And the Tevadan Dharma was presented and preserved in the Pali language, and the Mahayana Dharma was presented and preserved in, the, in, in, in Sanskrit. And um, after the, the Buddha's passing, then the, the, uh, the, Pali, the, the Pali tradition or the Tevadan tradition, this flourished in the world and became really uh, 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 vastly, uh, vastly uh, disseminated. Whereas after the Buddha's passing, the Mahayana Dharma in, in, or the Sanskrit tradition, this became uh, quite hidden and practiced in, in a hidden way. 
to the extent where you could say that it was almost had become unknown in the world. So these two traditions were in very different states. The one, the Pali tradition, was vastly disseminated, whereas the Sanskrit tradition of the Mahayana Dharma, this was in such as uh, was practiced secretly, and it could be could be said to be unknown in the world. ปอบทอมเมเซเดโลกุเกเจลาปอบทอมเมเซเพเจปอบทอมเมกิเซมเซมเปกิตะวิทอเนตะทะบะชิมิชุกิญามเลนติยากิชูตาเนตะสุจุ
he's, he was taught by uh, uh, Maitreya, and, and uh, Sangha again was the one who uh, not only uh, 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 pr- uh, proliferated the Mahayana Dharma, but also the mind-only view. So it's because of the, these two pivot, pivotal uh, masters in the, the lineage of the Mahayana Dharma that we have the Mahayana Dharma still flourishing in the world today. And the lineage we now can clearly trace back from them to the present day. Mm. So these are the reason, the reason why these two um, masters who are our lineage masters are, 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 are specifically referenced here in this text. Mm. <laughs> Tabachimboda, <laughs> Mm-hmm. And looking again at the, the last, last paragraph on this page, combining the rivers of the excellent teachings of both the Tevada vehicle and Mahayana vehicle scriptures, it is like a mighty ocean. So here, the uh, Lamrim, or the stages to the path of enlightenment, are likened to uh, a mighty ocean. The mighty uh, uh, ocean, the mighty ocean we know is never exhausted. It's continuously replenished by, by its great rivers. And here, the great rivers are the um, Tevadan uh, Dharma as well as the um, uh, Mahayana Dharma. And why the, then is this referred to this great ocean? It's because this great ocean that contains the, the two mighty rivers of, of um, the Tevada Dharma and the, the Mahayana Dharma, through practicing what is contained here, whatever one's spiritual goal is, can be attained. So if one ha- has generated a fear for the sufferings of the lower realms and desperately wants to ensure that one att- attains a good rebirth in one's very next life, the practices are here. If one has come to an understanding of how suffering pervades every rebirth in cyclic existence. And if one understands that as long as one remains bound within the prison that is samsara, one will never know a moment of true peace, let alone lasting peace, then one will have the wish to strive for liberation from suffering. And those practices are found here. And if one has taken that understanding and seen that it applies to all other beings and one hasn't just left that as um, something theoretical but has given rise to to overpowering love and compassion for others wanting them to experience the happiness that is separated from suffering completely then all the practices to attain the state of a Buddha are also found here in the Lam Rim. So whilst these entire teachings of the Buddha, all those sutras have been abridged into the Lamrim t- tradition. 
the, these abridged teachings are still complete in that they co uh, uh, contain all the practices that are required to attain any of these spiritual goals. So therefore, the Lamarum, whilst abridged, is complete. Mm. Yangomba <laughs> Digitubia <laughs> Dene <laughs> Tobai <laughs> Tarbata Jamalina, <laughs> Church, <laughs> Dinamnejade, 
So what we've been hearing here then is that the the lamrum or the, the stages for the path to enlightenment encompasses all the practices that a, 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 a practitioner needs to engage in in order to achieve one of the spiritual goals, the goals of a good rebirth or liberation or enlightenment. So everything is contained here within this, this Lamrim tradition. So then if you need to want to be specific, <laughs> because we're just look at talking here in, an, in, a, in a general way uh, from a perspective of an overview, so to be um, specific now in the closing minutes of this talk, what should one be practicing? Well, in reality, we, may n <laughs> we probably aren't going to attain liberation from cyclic existence in this very life or enlightenment in this very life, which means we will need to continue our spiritual progression in our future lives. So when that is the case, just like in a worldly context, if one has a, 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 a great goal, then one s sets out the various stages that one needs to reach, various intermediate goals, in order to eventually achieve a final goal. So this is the same in terms of our inner development, our spiritual development. We need to plan beyond this one mere life and ensure that we continue to have the required conditions in our future lives. But in order to achieve those required conditions, then we have to create those causes. So, if we think of the, of, of, uh, the various beings that we can observe, so we have some familiarity with ourselves and, and those around us, but we can think of, of um, people in very unfortunate circumstances that we perhaps know, uh, we see on television news, or we maybe know people who are in very unfortunate circumstances, or if we think of beings who in this life are, are in the animal realms, they have serious impediments to spiritual progression. And in fact, if they're born a, as an animal, it's, it's impossible to engage in, in um, spiritual development. They don't have the intelligence, and not only is there, there are their lives dominated by st stupidity, but also by tremendous fear. Because animals suffer this, this fear of constantly being under threat of being caught by a larger animal and eaten alive. So animals have no capacity for spiritual development. And so therefore, in, to continue our spiritual progression, we need a good human rebirth. Not just any rebirth, because we are aware some rebirths, are, some human rebirths, are also, also experience really overwhelming problems and difficulties. So one needs a rebirth that is good like the one we have now, where we have uh, physical and mental capacity, we have comfortable uh, circumstances, or at least adequate circumstances, and we can um, engage in spiritual development. So to ensure that we achieve at, at least as good conditions that we have in this life and our future lives, we have to create those causes. If we don't create the causes, we cannot expect to, to uh, 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 experience the result. So what are these causes that we need to create? So the first and the most important is we need to engage in um, ethical behavior or ethical conduct. And this, in brief, means to develop a mind of restraint, a mind that turns, us, a, a mind that turns away from harmful physical or verbal behavior, a mind of restraint. So this is the foundational practice, because that is what leads to a rebirth, in, that creates the causes that lead to a rebirth in a happier migration as a human or a god. But so, so as to ensure that future rebirths, even if they are in a, in a good state, like uh, as a human, but that one has good conducive circumstances to engage in spiritual development, one needs to have um, uh, adequate, at least adequate material resources. And the causes that we need to cultivate to ensure that comes about 
is to practice generosity, which in brief means to develop a mind wanting to give. And that is the cause. Developing this mind wanting to give is a cause to ensure that we have um, comfortable or adequate uh, circumstances in, in our future lives. Moreover, through in, uh, developing the mind of patience, which is in brief, a mind that um, is undisturbed in the face of adversity, if, if we, as we develop this mind, it creates the causes that, that in our future lives we are, um, we, we are, are physically healthy, that our, our sense faculties, our sight, our, our sound, etc., these are, 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 um, are, are complete, are, are not uh, faulty, and therefore enabling us to engage in spiritual development, to hear teachings, understand teachings, and be able to engage in meditation. So these three practices are essential, and for them to have great power, we need to uh, develop the practice or the mind of joyous perseverance, a mind that takes delight in virtue. And this ensures that in our future lives, we will seek out a, a virtuous path. We'll seek out the Buddha Dharma and, and, and a spiritual friend and be, want to engage in spiritual development with, with delight and with vigor. So that is the fourth practice, that of joyous perseverance. And moreover, if one wants to ensure that in our future lives, our minds aren't so distracted, our meditation is more effective, we need to develop causes in what remains of this life to have such a result. And that means we need to try and develop a more concentrated mind so that in our future lives, our mind is less distracted. So th and then the fifth, uh, that's the fifth, and then the sixth would be uh, to cultivate a mind of wisdom. So amongst these, to ensure that we have good rebirths in our future lives, there are four that need to be practiced. That of, of um, a mind of, of restraint or ethics, a mind wanting to give, that of generosity, a mind that is, um, that is um, uh, still in the face of adversity, that of patience, the mind that delights in virtue, choice perseverance. These are the four that we need uh, we, to ensure that we cultivate with us in meditation in this life. And as optionals, one can develop concentration and wisdom. And if one has a, f a further goal, if those sitting here want to attain more than just a good rebirth, but actually want to be free of suffering entirely, or want to become a Buddha for the sake of others, those same four practices also need to be engaged in. So that doesn't differ. But moreover, one also needs to engage in the practice of concentration and the development of wisdom. Then, if your goal is enlightenment or, or liberation, then those six practices have to be engaged in. So it's not these practices that actually um, are, that differ depending on the, the wish of an individual being. The practices are similar, the same first four and possibly the, sec the second two as well, making six. But what differs between individuals is the motivation. If one has a motivation just for a good rebirth, to ensure one doesn't fall into, into the lower realms, then with such a motivation, one just engages in the first four practices. But if one has developed a wish to be liberated, to definitely emerge from suffering and attain a state liberated from, from suffering, then one engages in those same six practices under such a motivation. But if one engages in those practices, but with a motivation doing so for the sake of others, so that all one's spiritual progression is for the sake of others, then one en is engaging in the same practices, but done so for the sake of others. In other words, one is developing the mind of bodhicitta for the sake of others. Mm. Be masih dinikit, nyamnen cia yoba diri, sekarang nyamnen cia gurita, cia jangan sulia, cik sunggores, ni sunggorwa, dini sunggat jangan sulia, sosolia, ni nyamikit dinikit lapje nanggu ya samje, sosolan lagi, cik cia jang, dah dinikit, samje tamje gitu nasi sanjo kubah tuhalia, tuhbi cuduan, nyamji rimba diki nyamnen cik, sambada, nanti si siapa nasi nene, mana sulia, nanti cium. Jadi, 
Again, as I mentioned in the conclusion last week, Sonam Gyatso is presenting this um, introduction to the Lamrim here for the specific purpose of pointing out the validity of the, the origin of this tradition so as to serve to encourage us to want to hear these teachings, study them, put them in our minds, and cultivate them in meditation each and every day. Because he's encouraging us here to develop the strong wish to repeatedly engage in our spiritual development over a sustained period. And in this way, we will develop spiritually and we will be, by practicing, just like all the uh, bodhisattvas in the world and all those who have already attained enlightenment, we too are walking in their footsteps, practicing in the same way as they are, and we will achieve their same goals. So that's the purpose of the, this introductory part of the uh, Lamarum teachings. And if we summarize the, 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 uh, the meaning of what we've heard here, or the meaning of, of how to practice rather, in your daily meditation, cultivate as a very minimum the um, strong and stable motivation that today I will not harm others. And in your meditation you develop this mind of restraint, this mind that restra of restraint that prevents one physically bringing any harm to others or through one's way of communicating or speaking to others, bring any harm to others. So that's the mind of ethics. And then accompanying this, developing a mind that wants to help others. Developing the commitment that wherever I encounter the opportunity to be of benefit to others today, I will take that opportunity and I'll take it with joy and I'll help others physically. I'll help others through my way of, of uh, verbally communicating with them. And in this way, we develop a mental attitude of wanting to benefit others. So the briefest form of meditation that I, that I hope you generate each, each day is developing this mind of restraint, this commitment not to harm others in any way, and developing this wish to benefit others, uh, developing this commitment to help others in any way that one can. So we'll finish here then tonight and continue next week. If you have um, some questions...